Wargaming Recon. Today is Thursday, April 9, 2020. This is the pandemic coffee break. I have my Tim Hortons mug right here filled with decaf, Earl Grey tea, cream, and Splenda. And it should be warm because I just warmed it up, unlike yesterday. <laughs> mm. I do love me some nice decaf tea. I love Earl Grey. It's great tea, and no wonder why Jean-Luc Picard uh, likes to drink it. So, I want to, first of all, um, say I hope all of you have your beverages here, because it is coffee break. I'm lucky enough to work from home, and uh, at least during the pandemic anyway. And even when I'm at work, I get a coffee break. And so I'm sending my coffee break here with you. And coffee break for me uh, when I'm at work, it's much like those old BBC series, Are You Being Served, where the whole department goes to coffee break and you all have your beverages and all that kind of stuff and you sit and you chat and you do whatever. Uh, but we bring our food from home if we're going to have a snack or anything. And often many of us will bring our own tea and coffee from home. Uh, we have a Keurig at work, so we bring our pods in and make it there so there wouldn't be any complaints about on. Uh, disgusting food or uh, beverages unlike in are you being served mm. good tea uh, so today we're going to talk about a few things but first I want to mention that yesterday for whatever reason I got stuck in the new Facebook live thing that they're doing and today I did not so I must have clicked the wrong button or some I don't know what the heck happened yesterday I did not like it at all <laughs> and it's very discombobulating so yesterday's coffee break was a little weird I guess you could say yeah a little weird today's is much much better you might notice I am clean shaven the pandemic beard is gone there's time once again to do it mostly because it was itchy and I was like oh man I'm scratching and scratching and touching my face way too much and all that kind of stuff so uh i'm glad that's gone uh, i'm not really a beard person i mean i guess maybe someday i might become one but not only do i have trouble growing one but also um i just i don't like them generally like i like i see them on like other guys and i think oh that's a nice beard or whatever um you know as long as it's like nicely done not too big or whatever not like a dwarf beard um usually i really like it good morning david good morning rob uh thank you for joining um from Canada, Rob. Um, but you should be a kind of person. So I really wouldn't do well in like, I don't know, the 1800s in America. Because like all those fellows um, you would see in the Civil War. They had like these big beards and the burn sides right for the sideburns. You, they were just going and going and going and going. And that's not really my style. Uh, and actually my sideburns, I feel like they're a little long. Like maybe it should even go up higher. But I just, I, I don't know why I tend not to. Maybe I could go sideburn less. I don't know. Uh, actually, speaking of here, this is a weird thing to be talking about. Good morning, Dave Valentine. Thank you for joining us. So this is a weird thing to be talking about, but hey, why not? We're just a bunch of um, people trying to get through the pandemic. And yesterday, or was it the day before anyway, uh, I happened to see uh, that uh, a friend of mine who I used to work with, who has been living in Japan for a few years now with her husband. He works for a Japanese news agency. Uh, online and he does reporting on like their website or whatever and she teaches English over there uh, she shared a picture uh, which you may or may not be able to see very well of her husband good morning Nathan thank you for joining us um, <laughs> and he got his hair done and it's colored and everything so uh, I think maybe I should try uh, getting my hair done that's just not coming through there you go and look at all those colors in there so what do you think could I should I color my green locks here for my dark brown um good morning barnaby thank you for joining us from canada should i color my hair and do rainbow color like that should i do a red or a green or a blue what should i do or um as my wife said no <laughs> i don't need to color it and my eldest was really sweet we were channeling uh, mr rogers uh <laughs> i think he's what she was doing she said daddy you don't need to color your hair. You'd have to go there. And anyway, I love you just the way you are. And I was like, oh, so I gave her a big hug and a kiss and a squeeze. And it was just, it was a really sweet moment. That was just literally minutes ago before starting this. And so that just, that's really, um, something sticks, I, which is really nice. Because I don't know about any of you, but if you have kids, especially small children, 
and you're all doing the stuck inside thing and with the uh, homeschooling and all that kind of stuff there are moments that are just they're not great okay they're bad <laughs> they're just really bad moments and um good morning matt and so they're just really bad moments with the kids where like all hell breaks loose and people are yelling and doors are slamming and just like all of us here and maybe with you too um just anxiety and temper flare or whatever and things are so that was just like a really sweet moment to be like yeah we're doing something right even though like it's hard right uh there's good going on as well uh nathan you're funny and rob says go with camo pattern i mean i guess i could but which camo pattern right would i do a navy camo would i do like an army camo a marine camo which one do i do woodland do i do um with all the white i guess it'd be easier to do like a snow pattern right that's a really hard question uh i don't know and then if i don't shave for a while do i extend the camo through here through my facial hair really it's a tough question and one maybe that we can't answer today and that's okay maybe we could answer it another day what camo pattern you know they don't i don't think they do hair color in camo patterns do they sell it they should because that would be really funny good morning robert um yeah i don't know what they um i'm not sure what they actually do um with it hmm because i mean most of the colors i see um are like the vibrant ones or neon ones now and not really something else but i don't know uh and actually i feel remiss yesterday uh, i should have and it just escaped my mind um last night was the first night of passover so for any of our friends uh and community members and any of you who celebrate passover a happy passover i would attempt to do it in hebrew but I would butcher it, and I don't want to cause offense, so I will not say it in that. Uh, but happy Passover to everyone. Uh, and um, I'm Catholic, which doesn't really mean much or anything, except that Easter's coming up on Sunday, so uh, we will be having a weird pandemic Easter thing that we'll be trying to do. So, I don't know. Uh, interesting, though, for how all of us are adapting to this. My wife's birthday's coming up. Uh, not next week, the week after. And... Like, doing birthday celebrations for her is really weird. Uh, yeah, just life is bizarre. Very, very weird right now. Um, let's talk about MDF for a moment. Uh, so, I had put a poll up on our fan group. Uh, and I'm just pulling it up again. Uh, and I said, which things for the basement kit by York Bender should I build and paint next? I'm sick of working on painting things brown. I need a break. The five wooden crates may not need to be painted there. So we had the five wooden crates. We had the Russian village blacksmith shop and tool shed. Six vertical tanks from his industrial line. The Sleepy Hollow covered bridge. And from his um, historic American buildings line, the Captain William Smith house. And yesterday they were tied. For those top two sleepy hollow covered bridge and the captain william smith house and i said that if they were still tied i was going to cast the tie-breaking ballot vote here kind of like in america the vice president who is president of the senate and he casts a vote when there's a tie so in case people don't believe me there's not a tie somebody voted for the captain william smith house after the um pandemic coffee break yesterday so the final tally is seven votes for captain william smith and six for sleepy hollow covered bridge so i will do captain william smith house next uh, and build it and all that kind of stuff i will say and I, I know i don't have to do it this way but i will say that it's brown it's wood and really maybe i shouldn't have put it in there because it's brown and wood but come on guys i said i'm tired of painting and building brown wooden things and you pick a brown wooden thing fine you like to torture me that's okay i'll do it i'll do it because that's how it goes this was our agreement i will do it really it's okay uh i do want to mention not about this but about a bit of news um that if you want to place any orders any of you from the hobby bunker you should do so now 
Uh, I don't know that they can do international orders because I tried to have something shipped internationally from things from the basement and was told by them that the uh, Postal Service is not shipping anything international right now. Uh, that any of you outside the U.S. cannot receive shipments from us from the Postal Service. Uh, I presume FedEx and UPS might still be. I don't know. And I also know the UPS has shut down incoming mail from other countries, not all, but some other countries uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, so if you're trying to ship stuff to us or to your loved ones, don't wait. Do it now is <laughs> really what it is. Uh, so I would say don't uh, wait as well for Hobby Bunker, but also because possibly next week they might be closed, like close, close, even mail order, uh, because that might be a peak for the pandemic around here. So get your orders in now, and if you're in uh, or near New England, I believe you can get free shipping on orders over $50 if you place them by phone. Uh, so the owner, Matt, is working full throttle. It's just him, and he's doing what he can uh, to get stuff going. So check them out and see what you can do. And you might want something free. We've been sharing a lot of cool free things you can get and giveaways and all sorts of stuff. So the Wargaming Company is doing a freebie right now uh, that you can get and I'm just gonna pull it up for you so that you can um, get the exact information and it is a free Napoleonic scenario small 1812 and I know I just butchered the pronunciation but oh well uh, so it's 1812 scenario it's free on their website so if you go to the wargamingcompany.com you should be able to find it it's a free pdf download uh, and it's oh no that's interesting so they say it's um a sample from their upcoming um book uh campaign guide 1812 to one that doesn't make any sense it says they're Oh, I see. They're revising their very first ESR campaign guide, 1812 1, Master of the World, 1812 in Russia. It's going to be reprinted. And so that's what they're doing. And these new maps are amazing. Yeah, so you can get this free. And I'm recommending it. One, because it's free and it's cool. Good morning, Ben. Thank you for joining us. Uh, but also because these maps are gorgeous looking at the PDF and totally erase my map criticisms of the Wargaming Company campaign guides um, from the podcast episode Adrian and I did uh, where I got salty. He got salty too though, so we got to all own that. Uh, but check it out, wargamingcompany.com. Download the free PDF. It's really cool. And then, if that's not enough cool stuff uh, that's going on, if anyone happens to have a little bit of money that they can put towards a good cause. Uh, the people at Pendragon are doing a GoFundMe so that they can buy more um, supplies. I mentioned yesterday that they have been approved to make face um, shields uh, in the UK. They're giving them away for free to like local schools and places and stuff. And they're churning through their stock of plastics uh, that they can use for it. Uh, so they are doing a GoFundMe so that they can buy more. They have the machines and the ability to make this stuff, and they just want to um, they want to do it is what it is. But of course, all of it is expensive. And if they're doing this and giving it you know, money from the usual stuff, and I mean with the pandemic anyway, things are just hard. Uh, so if you have some money and would like to, you can uh, do it and donate to their GoFundMe. And let me give you the actual information and see if I can pull up a link for you as well. And uh, just take a moment as I do that. Uh, yeah, so I just, I think it's really amazing how all these different companies are coming together and doing what they can to help out and just do all that kind of stuff. Uh, so it's just, it's really, really cool that it's happening. And I'm not able to find, well, I'm sorry, I'm not able to find um, the link, but they are doing, they are doing a GoFundMe. Uh, and because I, I looked at it earlier, <laughs> and I know they were raising money. Um, 
and I'm just, I'm not finding it. So I do apologize, but I know it's here somewhere. Uh, so we'll get back to you on that, uh, and maybe tomorrow we'll actually have the link for it. Uh, my apologies, that's disappointing. Um, so, in case you're wondering what the, um, good morning Mark, thank you for joining us. In case you're wondering what the Captain William Smith house looks like, I have it here. So, historic American buildings. What's it retail? It retails for $37.50. Uh, we got this for review, so it's our review copy. And you can see it's big, right? Look at that. Six and three quarter inches long by five and a half wide by six and a quarter um, high. Here's some of the MDF. Oh, that's a bad shot. Look. So the stairs and railings. Let me take some of this out so you can actually see um, what this actually looks like. Just because... Um, that's the one thing I was thinking about the other day that it'd probably be a pain in the butt for him, but I kind of wish Jorg uh, let you just bought sprues of stuff. And then you paid by weight or something, I don't know. Um, so here's one of the sprues here. So you get some uh, of those banisters maybe, or um, outside fencing. Um, not fencing. Um, probably more like banisters, I guess. And you get stairs. And this, I bet, is a chimney or a stove. So that's pretty cool. Mark says, I love that model. Mark, do you have this model? What do we get here? So this is some of the uh, exterior of it. I think this is the front door. And from what I recall, it took a while for um, York to make sure he got the door just right because the door, is, I guess, is pretty iconic. And some more pieces. Uh, this, I'm guessing, is... A top or a roof maybe as well uh, Dave says you can get spruce he sells wagon wheels and windows he does but like for example if I just wanted oops insert if I just wanted this sprue here right with the door let's say I'm gonna kit bash it's not automated like you can't just add it in I'm sure if you could email him, and your does all sorts of stuff by request. Um, but like, it'd be great. It'd be a nightmare for him for inventory. But it'd be great if he like listed this just on his website, and you're like, oh, I want this, and so that you could just order this. You'd get this whole sprue right here with the stuff. Um, but you're right; you can't just get like wheels and stuff. And I believe this is for the, like the back portion of the house because it slopes down. Uh, Mark says uh, he does not own this kit, but someday it is a gorgeous kit. I was so excited when he came up with it. Oh, uh, and look uh, for the roofing. And this is the floor, an interior floor, of course. And what else do we got? Oh man, we got a lot of good stuff here. I've never opened this, to be honest. It's been sitting. I've had this for a so. Um. Ages ago, Yorg was like, hey, you know, you're reviewing a lot of stuff for me. That's awesome. But instead of me just being like, how about we just get like a gigantic package of stuff together that you're going to review? Like just tons and tons and tons and tons of it. And he knew that we were going to be seeing each other at an upcoming event. I believe it was the uh, Make Sure Game Day. And he's like, I'll just give you a whole thing. And I got this gigantic bag, huge bag of stuff. Dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of kits of stuff. I tell you, it was heavy as heck. This was one of them. So this has been, oh God, way too long. <laughs> but it's been there. Uh, so here we have some doors. Oh, look at these doors. I love the panelings on them. Look at that. And of course the slot here. So you can put a door handle in. Uh, and bracing for doors. I love how he nests stuff inside. So there's really no wasted space. Oh, and the windows! Oh, 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 I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love windows. Good morning, Adam. Thank you for joining us. Talking about the Captain William Smith house. And look at these beautiful windows. In the front door. I think that's the front door. Uh, just gorgeous. And it looks... Well, I'll be... So you can't see. Because it'd be way too hard to show you. Uh, and maybe even a photo, it might not be. But these door panels... I can tell from the back that they pop out. 
and I bet that's so you can model it so that the door is slightly open or shut. And what oh, I think I'm very excited about is all these windows have the insert so I can pop those out and use those for debris. And then what's the last piece here? I think this is just roofing. Roofing. Here's another insert that fell. So more roof stuff. And I bet these are cut out for the chimney. Very cool, very cool kit. Oh man. So that'll be fun. So I'll have to figure my colors and spray pyramid and all that kind of stuff and get that going as well. It's a really cool thing there. And I have um the other thing that um you're from things from the basement uh is um has available and it's the Concord Bridge, I believe. I'm just gonna double check that on his website. Yeah, the Old North uh, Bridge, Concord River Bridge. So I have that as well, and I know he's coming up with some more historic buildings that'll be showing up as well. Um, so Barney may ask, how do you find the quality compares to foreground? So I have to say, I have a foreground kit, and actually I'll show it to you in a moment. Um, and it's the only foreground kit I've ever actually obtained. Uh, it was provided to us for a review. Um, I've not bought any other ki kits from them. I haven't got any because I've been concerned about the um, intricacies involved with them. And that has had me shy away. Now, the foreground kit I have is their version of a Things from the Basement kit. So... Uh, from what I understand, the really primary differences are, as with any foreground kit, it's already been painted, right? Uh, and so you just kind of assemble it. And then this one happens to be one of their newer kits, and so it has this special color powder thing that you use. So let me grab it so I can show that to you uh, as well. Uh, hold on one moment, everyone. Oh, thank you. All things that I would and could never do if this is just a podcast and not a live stream. Uh, I'd be like, hold on, I gotta go. So here's the kit I have from them, from Foreground. It's a farm building set. Uh, they call it farm building set one. So this is actually the Mediterranean village um, that you created. And I want to make sure I get the names of the Mediterranean village buildings correctly for you. Uh, yeah, Foreground tends to rename everything which I find confusing uh, in that it's hard for me to match uh, what foreground stuff has been done, um, versions rather of things for the basement kits. But it also makes sense because some of the things that they do for renaming makes it more marketable, I think. Uh, so if like you're just looking at, uh, I don't know, something called Fountain, that doesn't <laughs> tell you a whole lot. Like I think it's perfectly fine. But if you're going like over Europe and you're having like all the hissies and dies and all this, like you, you want to attach it to a property, right? So I believe this is the two story house and the small farm building, is what I believe um, these are in this kit. And let's just open it up so I can show you guys a, a peek because I did open it. I'm not going to open everything. Stuff is still. Sorry, that was awful. I just slammed the mic. Stuff is still sealed in the um, packaging. So I got as far as to look at instructions and look at the powder stuff, and that scared me. <laughs> I'll be honest, that scared me. Uh, so I didn't, but you can see some of the coloration here for the colors that they used for stuff, and as well. So that's the foregoing um, version of it, and it's nicely packaged in the box. So you can see that's how it came from the United Kingdom. And just seal that back up. Um, so just from my first glance at looking at it and from what I've seen of other foreground kits, I have to say the quality is consistent. I would say things in the basement really are 
some of my favorite MDF kits. I've seen other kits by other companies who I'm not going to name, and they're just not as enjoyable for me. Other people really like them, which is fine. Uh, taste is subjective, right? What we like and dislike, but that's just not for me. I love things in the basement, and one of the things I love the most about them is how accessible they are. York has really planned out every single aspect of how to put it together, uh, how to paint it, how to do all the stuff. He's thought through it all, and it's immaculate, so it's really just top-notch as well. Uh, Rob says, I have a lot of kits from all over the world. I still say Things in the Basement has consistently been top-notch, tons of details, and easy to assemble. I agree, Rob. Absolutely. And Mark says, easily as nice as foreground, if not better, much more user-friendly. I will say it's definitely more user-friendly. Um, good morning, Paul. Thank you for joining us. Barnaby wants to know, how about TT Combat or Bandua? I am not familiar with either of those, so I unfortunately cannot speak to them. Uh, but if anyone else is, please let us know, and we'll share that. And Mark says he considers Things from the Basement and Foreground to be the two best companies of all of them. Uh, good morning, Joseph. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and Barnaby says Foreground instructions, in quotations, are not great. Drives me nuts sometimes. Um, again, I, I read the instructions for my kit through the packaging, and so I haven't opened it yet. Partly because um, I don't want to lose anything. Partly because I'm not ready. Like, if I open it, I feel like I'm going to have to work on it right now. And then also... I'm not sure if I'm going to send it off to one of our teammates to tackle who might be uh, less afraid of working with the powder. Uh, we, In case you don't know, here we're giving a recon. So like we started out many, many, many years ago. Now it's been God, over 15 years of doing the podcast. Uh, we started out as just uh, an internet message board, actually. Uh, so we've been doing that. Uh, been around really since 1994. Uh, and the podcast happened later on. And we got rid of the main internet message board. Uh, we had tons of people on the internet message board where we predominantly talked about Warhammer stuff and Games Workshop stuff, but then we migrated away and then did the podcast. And the podcast has been going for ages. And then we kind of ebbed and flowed with having uh, writers. Um, but in the past year ish, we've done a push where we've had more authors on uh, writing stuff for us and writing articles, which has been really great. And then expanding our team for uh, other people to co contribute video and audio. Uh, and some of them will be on the podcast and some won't, uh, or we'll add segments that they record separately, doing a variety of things. And the whole reason for my telling you this is that we've grown into what I feel is a larger organization, <laughs> which is weird for me. Uh, so it used to be just me, and then it's just me and Adrian, really. Um, uh, and before Adrian, there was, um, someone else, there was Tom and that lasted a while as a coach. So it was just, but really it's always just been me. And so now it's weird in that, uh, it's predominantly me doing most stuff, uh, you know, doing the podcast and overseeing everything and editing and all that kind of stuff, not, not editing audio, uh, but editing all that. And then, uh, Adrian, Less so right now because of his life being so crazy, but in general, he's like the second most. But then we also have Joshua doing all the audio editing. Joshua's amazing. Um, and Jamie's helping out with show notes and all that kind of stuff. But then we expanded, and so we have all these other people now who can review things. So like uh, Robert Dunn did a whole review uh, yesterday that I posted his article on Ancient Civilizations of the Inner Sea, the board game by GMT, uh, which is co-designed by our buddy Mark McLaughlin. And that's the thing where, like, I would have had to do it, or Adrian, like, we would have been like, oh, why, what do we do? So we've expanded, and now we have the option of sending stuff out. And usually, if we know in advance, we'll have a company that's sending it to us, whether we buy it or they give it to us for review, send it directly to the reviewer so that the reviewer, the person covering it, can just get it. It's easier and have all that kind of stuff going on. It just makes life so much easier. And it's honestly, it's cheaper for us, <laughs> too. Uh, we don't get a lot of money, uh, as it were. I know we just did a Kickstarter, and that was wonderful. Uh, and I don't want to diminish that in any capacity. But, like, we don't make profit, really, here. Like, I don't make any money off of this. None of us make money off of it. Uh, our hope is to be revenue neutral, <laughs> is really what it is. Uh, so that's what we try and then we we try to give some money to the people who help us out with stuff and pay them for some things and do what we can and uh, just a variety of that. Uh, so postage costs would eat us alive if we had to send stuff all the time, all over. Because it's not just a U.S. thing. We're global. 
So like Joshua's in Australia, Jamie's in Norway. We have people all across America. America is so large. It's like many, many other countries all together. So like we're really spread out. And thankfully in this digital age, we can do that. Uh, but it's just, it's crazy. Uh, so that's why I haven't opened that and why we're waiting to see how that goes as well. Um, Mark says my recent foreground models have provided much better instructions than some of the older kits. That's good to know. And Rob says, I would love to start a podcast here. I could be your Canadian affiliate. Rob, I totally think you should do a podcast. I think everyone should. It's something anyone can do. And I know my therapists have told me that's not true, but I think they're full of it. Any of you can do it. All you have to do is have the passion, have the desire, and you can do it literally with, wherever I put it, with your phone. You don't need fancy setups. You don't need a crazy mic hanging down or this webcam app that I have. You don't need any of that. Or the extra lighting I got put in. Or You don't need any of that. You don't need a camera like this for video that I'm going to show you. It's an SLR I got secondhand from Adrian, but I think it retails now just for the body. I think it retails for like a thousand bucks or something stupid. You don't need a camera like this to do video. You don't. Or the, all the fancy lenses. You don't. I don't care. Don't let anyone tell you you need to have pro stuff or anything. You need, and you probably have, smartphone. It doesn't have to be an iPhone. This. You can talk into it. It's good enough. You can shoot video with it. This shoots 4K video. My phone shoots 4K video. I don't need 4K video. No one wants to see my pores. But this fancy camera that I have, that I got second hand, does 1080p. 1080p is fine. Perfect, good, high def, good enough. You don't need anything fancier. But your phone shoots 4K. Come on. You can do it with all of that. And it's amazing. And I would say, go ahead and start podcasting. Um... Rob, if you are really 100% serious about wanting to create content for us, contact me. Um, send me an email, jonathan at wargamingrecon.com, or contact me on Facebook. Uh, if you go to our Facebook page, you can send us a message. And we'll see what we can do to work something out uh, so that maybe you can uh, record yourself doing some audio or some video work or whatever you, you like. Send it to us and we can put it out through the distribution streams. And that goes for anyone else, really. Um, we tend to be, quote, full up for, like, full podcast people. But if any of you have content you want to create or that you've created and you want to send, we'll put it out. We will give you full attribution and you're golden. Uh, so that's something to do. And I know we're running a little long today, uh, but that's okay because I want to share something really cool. So a while back, I was talking with a buddy of mine and I said to him, you know, you don't often get to see video of when we record podcasts. Uh, but in any of those videos that go up, you might not notice that I have something really cool uh, that is in plain sight, but you may just not have noticed. And it's a nice collectible. And well, I'm gonna I'm gonna show it to you right now. So this is an original Generation One Transformers Megatron. Now you're gonna think, well, why do you take it out? You don't take it out of the box. So this was meal order. Good morning, Peter. Good morning, Jorg. So this was meal order. So this is actually counts as being new in the box. Uh, last time I looked, this is valued at like over $500, which is ridiculous. I have the box. The box is in good condition. Everything here works. Uh, let's take out the gun. Let's take out Megatron, I should say. And it's just, it's a beautiful toy. This metal, you wouldn't see this metal nowadays. The plastic is just gorgeous. And it fully transforms. And this is just, it's a neat little thing that exists. And they just, they don't make them like this anymore. So I'm not a gun guy, but this would be my gun. I have a lot of Transformers. A lot of original Transformers. They're not all new in box. Most of them are open. Um, but... I love me some Transformers, and it's just, it's gorgeous, and this has all the accessories and everything that you could want, and all the add-ons, oh, let's pull some of them out, I know we're not a toy thing, but this is something that makes me happy, and during this pandemic, it's important to be happy, 
So you have wrong spot. You have the stock because for some reason you need a stock <laughs> for your toy. You have a silencer as well, which goes like this. <laughs> and because sometimes he silenced himself, and it's just it's a great little piece of collectible stuff and just I love all this kind of stuff so I don't know what any of you collect um, besides gaming things or whatever but this is something that brings me joy and I have and if you want to know where it normally appears is if you look over this shoulder up on the bookcase you're gonna see I have some games up there so I have Command and Colors Ancients all the way over there and Hitler's Reich with maneuver behind it and then in between you're gonna see there's a cardboard box and that's where I display Megatron uh, so that's a thing uh, but I have a lot of collectibles a lot of Transformers I have GI Joe's I have uh, Masters of the Universe I it's like the 80s through up is what it is and almost all of these are original from when I was a kid in good condition uh, Ninja Turtles I mean uh, just it's crazy um, I think I even have like some Smurf stuff and Star Wars of course and a million different things and I suppose that's common with any of us Gen Xers but it's just I love all this kind of stuff and I was on Twitter the other day and I saw that Jay Arnold uh, was pulling out his um, Oh, missing a piece. I was pulling out his um, Hero Quest, and I was like, "Well, I got Hero Quest, and I got mine right here." So I pulled my Hero Quest out. And I was looking at my Hero Quest stuff, uh, and it was just—it was really cool to see his and see mine, and how many other people have Hero Quest things, and uh, just all that kind of stuff. So that was really snazzy, as well. Uh, Mark says, I have an assortment of new and old toys on the shelf as well, mostly Star Wars. My other ho real hobby is guitars, though. No such thing as an inexpensive hobby. That's true. There is no such thing as an inexpensive hobby. Uh, guitars. So, the Mythwits was talking on Monday on their show, and Pete was saying how he wants to get back to playing an instrument and learn how to play it. And someone mentioned guitar, I think. And he talked about maybe bass, but I think he should do ukulele, because I'm told that's pretty easy to pick up and to learn so i don't know any of you else have hidden talents uh, please put it in the comments below or in the chat uh, and uh let us know what the hidden talents are or what else you collect or cool things that you do it's neat to get to know everyone um this way and then finally i have nothing else on the pile there finally i just want to mention i've been watching the new season of westworld and it's amazing uh, I don't know if any of you have seen Westworld or not. I love it. It's a great series um, by HBO. And the new season, I wasn't sure how it was going to go because there was a... I can't say anything without spoiling the stuff before. So there was a big thing that happened at the previous season that changed a lot of things. And I was worried that it was going to change it for the negative. And so when this season started, I was like, hmm, well... Let's see how it goes. I have not been disappointed. There have been times where I was like, what the heck? I don't understand. Then I was like, oh my goodness. And then I understood. It's just a beautiful writing, great acting. Puts a lot of things on its head. It's cool and futuristic, but not at the same time. It's just unlike almost anything else you've seen. Uh, I will warn you, though, that there's a lot of violence, uh, gratuitous violence, and nudity. So just like when I would watch Game of Thrones, I cover my eyes. I literally am like, okay, I don't want to see naked people. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. And then, like, I asked my wife to be like, okay, is it safe for me to look? Because <laughs> uh, like, I just, I'm not interested in any of that. And if you are, no judgment here, but I just, I don't want to, I don't want to look at naked people. It's just not my thing. Uh, Mark says season two kind of lost me halfway through. You got to stick with the mark. There's some really good payoffs in season two and then in season three you're like oh my goodness uh one thing i will tell you because i don't think he appeared before uh the one is his name aaron paul the actor who was in brick and bad and played jesse he's in this and he's awesome 
So I highly recommend that you uh, give it a watch if you have uh, HBO uh, or if you get streaming HBO Now, HBO Go, I think it's called. And if not, I think they do free trials. So check it out and see if you can get it from there. And then one other thing, I think this is streaming on one of the platforms you can get from the libraries. It's either like um, uh, Film On Demand or Canopy, something like that. Uh, and also it's on HBO too, but it's the uh, Chernobyl series, miniseries, wonderful, um, gut-wrenching, and you might want to lose your lunch because they actually show stuff, but it's just fantastic and um, gave me new respect for the Russians uh, with how they handled the Chernobyl situation. Uh, something I never thought I would have for them with that, to be honest. Uh, Mario says, I'm good with naked people. And... Then I want you to get your thinking hats on for tomorrow. So tomorrow, one thing we're going to do is uh, a popular thing going around online is to share 10 unpopular things, whether it's opinions or beliefs or whatever. So I want you to put your thinking hat on because I'm going to ask you to put in the comments or the chat or whatever some of your unpopular beliefs and feelings and thinkings and ideas about gaming and i'll share some of mine too so thank you everyone for being with us for this pandemic coffee break please be safe remember listen to the experts the doctors the scientists the medical people not karen on facebook and for the love of god 5g is not cause in the pandemic just seriously get that out of your head right now if it was in there it is not causing the pandemic it's not influencing it at all 5G has nothing to do with it, okay? <sighs> now that I got that off my chest. Uh, so be good to yourself and others. Be kind. Be wonderful. Be safe. Stay healthy, please. And let's flatten on the curve. If not for you, please do it for me. I'm at risk. I don't want to get this. <laughs> so please, let's be good and kind. And stay the heck home, please, everyone. So thank you so much for watching. We'll be back tomorrow for another pandemic coffee break at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we'll see what progress I make on stuff and how things are going. But remember, no matter how busy you are, no matter how much time you're spending, wondering what is more than meets the eye? Is your toaster going to wake up and kill you in your sleep? And the answer is, if it's a Decepticon, maybe. But really, they just want the energy on. You know that you have to. You gotta, you need to, that's right. Keep on gaming. Thanks everyone. Be well.